Nice. All right, everybody, welcome. We are here today with Randy, and uh, my phone is ringing. Guess what? It's another scam. <laughs> That's about the 30 second scam I've gotten all day. So, with Randy, who many of you do or don't know, let me ask you a question. Anybody in here not know Randy? Give me a no if you don't, so I know what we're talking about here. Anybody? A no or a yes? Is there any no's? Need content to stuff images. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Looks like you're, you're a celebrity. Randy, everybody knows you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to have a little bit of fun today. This is, uh, you know, just an impromptu um, way of sharing what Randy is doing, uh, some of the things that we're involved in. And uh, just want to give you a bunch of content, stuff that Randy's figured out how to do using ChatGTP. He does utilize a couple tools. Uh, you, what do you use? Jasper, um, Human Pal. What else do you use, Randy? What are the tools uh, I, that you use? I, I've been using uh, Jasper for a little bit over two years. Um, I'm about to give that up right now. And I've been, uh, I, I got uh, Zimrider I use, that, that I still use. This does not replace that. Right. Um, they do two completely different processes. So okay. um, it, it's- You're gonna go over what they both do today then? Yeah, I'll talk right? about it. When, when we get to that, I will talk about that a little bit. Okay, cool. Because what, one of the things, I've gone out and bought a, a number of programs thinking that they were gonna, you know, be pretty good, and they turned out to be not so good. Um, so uh, if you're ready, let's just get into it, and I'll give you guys a little bit of background about me that you might okay. not know. I will say Randy does tend to buy more tools than me, and I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> so uh, that being said, you know, let's, uh, let's rock and roll. Let's have some fun. Okay. Uh, let me... And by the way, here I do want one one protocol, right? As we go through this, I think it would be it's up to you. We want to answer questions as we're going through, or wait until the end and circle back all the way to where you're answering questions. Uh, it it doesn't, you know, if people have questions and we're in the middle of something, I'm it doesn't bother me. But we okay. can and either either way, I do have a question answers, you know, at the end, but. Uh, That'll probably be more based on what I show when I start demoing the products. Um, but a little bit about me, this picture of my wife and myself. And uh, I just so the some of you know, I've I've been doing copywriting for a long time, but I really took it seriously about 12 years ago. And as a result, I ended up uh uh, owning a publishing company. I started a publishing company and uh, ended up uh, myself uh, becoming eight-time bestseller books. These are some of the books uh, that I um, wrote here on the bottom and um, the picture. And so the one thing that I really took a, a, an interest in it when AI came out was a whole idea of being being able to write good copy, and that's where I found myself very disappointed with what uh, Chat GPT did. And um, I I watched a demo using Chat GPT four, and um, I, I think it will do some amazing things, but it didn't cure the main problem when it comes to writing good quality copy. Um, it, it has some tremendous uses that you know can't be overlooked but uh it fails in a couple areas uh itself and one of those is in the area of uh, prompt engineering so uh with that said um and by the way i've been married for 52 years to that uh, young lady right there so uh she's put up with me for a while so you guys don't even compare how long you've had to put up with me um okay i as I said earlier, I've been using AI for the past two years with a program called Jasper, 
And I've stuck with that because Jasper does a pretty good job of writing content as a human. But when chat GPT came out, like many of you, I used it, I analyzed its capabilities and limitations. And uh, you know, I put it through the ringer. I've looked at a lot of programs, tons of hours watching videos in terms of what you know people are sharing uh, with chat GPT. And one of the things I found is the biggest problem if any of you have used it, is they designed it with the idea of you could just put in a few key words and it's going to output something that's really tremendous. And we're going to talk about that in, in a moment, but for doing some research or you know doing a research paper or something like that, that may be good enough, but when it comes to writing for uh, conversions, uh, which, you know, I know we're all into, you know, looking at SEO and that type of thing, but ultimately somebody's going to land on your page and you want that person to convert. And that's where the weakness is with the type of writing that uh, Chat uh, GPT came along with. Um, what happens is uh people they buy by emotions and what chat gpt does is it doesn't write with emotions okay and we know that emotional driven copy is the best way to write and also you don't write for the mass market you know if if i'm writing a, a web page or an article or something i'm addressing it to a particular person so that the person that's reading it can relate to it. And by the way, other people that read it, even though they might not be that same uh, person in terms of their, uh, whether it's female, male, uh, demographics or whatever, that what happens is that uh, they're still gonna relate to the content if it's emotionally driven. And so what happens is, uh, um, the stuff that we're getting today out of chat GPT is what I would call it's logical. And, um, and that's one of the, the problems with it because you sell based on emotion and then you justify your purchase based on logic. So you do have to have both of them, but you first have to approach people with uh, emotion. And so Jasper had done that to an extent However, uh, what I found with Chat, Chat GPT was that it didn't do it at all. And the inherent problem with Chat GPT is that you know you it didn't give it context. In other words, you when you gave it a few words, that didn't give it the context uh, enough context to know how it should write. And when you look at the masses that are using chat GBT right now, it, it becomes a real problem because they're developing content just for the sake of content rather than something that's gonna work. Now, if I was going to build a G site that I wanted uh, to be used just as a buffer site, for an example, uh, the content that chat, chat GPT creates would be perfectly fine. But if I'm creating content that I want somebody else to see and um, rank from, it, it doesn't do the job because it, the content it does is described as logical, okay? So it, it's, it's just got this logical sequence to it. And it makes a difference. I, I tell you a little story. Um, my daughter-in-law is a, uh, an attorney uh, a criminal defense attorney. And when we started, I, I got her to start using uh, chat GTP, uh, GPT. And then I, uh, and I had her start using Jasper. And what, what she was doing just came across as it was good information because she was, you know, writing answers to 
questions and, and that she had to give to the court and everything else. But, you know, I said, you know, why don't you ask it to write uh, your content as a, one of the famous attorneys that ever lived who was a defense attorney? And who might that be? And she said, well, it's Clarence Nero. I says, okay, just change your writing so that you're requesting that it be written the way Clarence Darrow would write it. And the result just turned on, on a dime in terms of the stuff that she was producing because it used his framework as she was writing the information. And so what that quickly showed me and what I was discovering as you know, if you were in this uh, in the Skype room that uh, Patrick had just talked about, you would have found that there were people coming out and saying, oh, you know, click here and you get 700 prompts for chat GPT. Click here and you get 2000 prompts for chat, chat GPT. Click here and you can, you know, and I was collecting them. And, you know, after a time, yeah, I had. <laughs> I had I, I can't tell you I, I probably had at least 20 pages single spaced of prompts and I couldn't find anything that I wanted to in there okay and so in order to get good emotional copy that sounds like a human wrote it we want to go through and do what's called prompt engineering and what prompt engineering is it is going to take emotional copy and uh, or it's going to you're going to give it enough of a prompt that it understands what it is that you're doing and if you're good at it people will pay for it uh, for an example there is a site called prompt base and it is where people have engineered a prompt to do something and then they put it on prompt base where people could buy their prompt in order to uh, do that, I got to move this out of the way just one second here, so you can no, see, we it. see it. Okay, so what what you have is, you know, you can get a detailed book writing for nine dollars and ninety nine cents, ten dollars. Okay, you can get a uh, diagram, you know, for two ninety nine. Uh, you can get different types of products out there uh, based on whatever the prompt is. But again, you have to look for all these prompts, whether you're doing it in G uh, GPT or whether you're doing it in mid-journey or whatever you're doing in order to get the end result that you're looking for. And, you know, so there are people that have recognized that out there. But like I said, you need a way to do it. And what attracted me to uh, Human Talk, which includes an AI writer, uh, was the fact that the biggest thing with it is it actually creates a prompt that is very, very powerful. And let me give you an example of that. Something happened that I, I moved that into, there we go. Okay, so with TextWriter, th this is their system, Human Talk, we're, we're going to talk about, but part of the Human Talk platform is TextWriter, and what it allows you to do is you can either, you know, type in your prompt here, or you can speak your prompt in, and I'll demonstrate that when we get to it, and then what the secret sauce is to it is it you can instruct it to write as a famous copywriter so that when the you're when it's writing your content it's not writing it the way you would write it it's not writing it the way chat gpt would write it it's writing it the way a famous content uh a copywriter is writing it and so uh just to give you an example of what i mean when we say you know prompt uh you know, engineering, this is what most people would say. Uh, and I happen to be using it uh, 
to do some work that I'm doing right now with dental implants. As most of you know, I, that's where my focus has been. So I said, write an article about dental implants as a world famous copywriter, Joe Sugarman, using his framework. And that's what I taught my daughter-in-law to do. But this is how text writer engineers the prompt. And I'll tell you the difference of what you get out in the end result is a difference in night and day. So the prompt came back as apply Joe Sugarman's AD, AIDA framework to write a persuasive article about the benefits of dental implants. Start with an attention grabbing headline and use the opening paragraph to create intrigue and highlight the problem that dental implants can solve. Build interest by showcasing the benefits of dental implants in the main body of the article. Use statistics and expert quotes to add credibility. Create desire by painting a picture of how dental implants can transform a person's life and positively impact their self-esteem. Close with a strong call to action, encouraging the reader to take the next step towards getting dental implants. Use Joe Sugarman's persuasive language and storytelling techniques to make the article engaging and memorable for the readers. I mean, that's insane. The difference between this and this is absolutely insane. And that's what we are talking about when we're talking about doing prompt engineering, because we want to get an article that was written by Joe Sugarman in his framework to, you know, have to do persuasive copy. Now, let me give you an idea of how many frameworks there are out there. Let me pull this up. No, Amy just <clears throat> referred to the one that we all we all know that came out a little bit ago, which is the AIPRM, mm -hmm. right? which is you know set up usually in 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 the open AI. When you get that, you can add that in there, and it's all there as well. So, you know that that's just an example of what Randy's talking about is that there are a lot of these out there that help, right? But you still have to drill down in in what Randy is sharing on on really being specific on how to get the right prompt. So that's, that's great. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. Yeah. It, and so, yeah, just to give you an idea of the type of writing and props that are out there, this happens to be a uh, particular book by uh, a copywriter that I subscri uh, subscribe to. And you get get hold of this for, I think it's around $300, $350. And you have the AIDA formula. You got this formula, AIDCA formula. You got the PAS formula by Dan Kennedy. You got the four P's formula. And you got Danny Innes, uh six plus one formula. You got the ACCA <laughs> formula, the SLAP formula, AAPPA formula, the AIDPC formula, PAPA formula, the Quest formula, the five point copywriting formula. The AICPBSAWN formula. A lot of acronyms, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, it's like never ending. Yeah, it, it is. And each one has a, produces a completely different result in the mm -hmm. copy that you're creating. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, you got Bob Sterling's copywriting formula, which is incredible. Uh, you got a sales letter uh, formula. Uh, you got the seven step copywriting formula, uh, Perry, uh, Belcher. 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 thank you. 21 so parts. What, what you're, you're basically saying is that you could create your prompt and then utilizing understanding these particular formulas or any other ones that you might have in your, your toolkit. Right. And then just take that information and say, please do X based on, you know, PAS, TOR formula or whatever. Right. Yes, or if you know who wrote that formula, you could just say, you know, do it in the framework of famous copywriter, so-and-so, like Joe Sugarman, mm -hmm. who did the AIDA formula. Is that helpful for everybody? I mean, to understand that, you know, there's, so, look at how many different ways are there to skin this cat right there, right? I mean, literally, you know, you could ask the same thing on how many, how many different ways. Oh, <laughs> here's a thought from Scott. I just thought to use Oprah, maybe for content on gift giving. Guess what? You can do that. You can do that. You know, 
And it's interesting because you can ask it to find out the tone and, uh, and the copywriting style of anybody you want. And it will come back and research that and tell you the tone that that one is in. So for example, if you wanted to see what the total style of Tony Robbins was, you can do that. So, you know, the, the thing is, you know, there is just a lot of information here that goes into the prompt engineering that has been built into this particular program that I've not found anyplace else. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what I find is I want to be able to get content that comes out this way. And even if, if I was looking for something, there would be probably some occasions where I would write the prompt. I'd ask the question, write, get the prompt, and I would then take that prompt over to chat GPT and, and execute it there. Because chat, chat GTP4 is going to be doing some, um, it has some capabilities of doing some things currently to get such things as research and uh, the, the chat, the chat GP3 does not do. And is it, is it up to date or is it still using outdated data? No, it's, it's really up to date from what right. I saw. Is but, it using up-to-date information or up-to-date internet information? Up-to-date internet information. So you don't need u.com anymore. It's going to it's going to be compatible with u.com as being up-to-date. No, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Okay. For an example, mm -hmm. my my daughter-in-law, uh, I I would see her creating a prompt in here and then mm -hmm. going to chat GPT-4 to do the research of the case studies that support the argument that she's making. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, th there's just nobody out there right now that has the ability to create this type of prompt. This, you know, Paul Pana is the only one who has done that. <laughs> Somebody had raised their hand. So was there a question there? Yeah, it's like write a four-hour webinar in Jason Fladden style. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to write all my webinars from now on. I'm just going to do that, get the robot, and we'll just, you know, I don't even have to do anything. Yeah. yeah now, thanks, Frank. Appreciate that. <laughs> a couple of things that uh, I'm providing you is I identified 25 copywriters that you would probably want to use because these are 25 greatest copywriters of all time that you might want to use for your copy. Uh, Oprah was not in there, but again, uh, she's not a copywriter, but, uh, and then I have, uh, I also wrote, and this is a 58 page uh, white paper. And I have this other paper, Unlock Your Agency Superpower, which is 20 page white paper. And that goes into everything from tasks and flows to uh, content creation and everything else as it applies to a marketing agency, okay? So uh, you'll be able to get that, whether you, buy, whether you buy the software or not, you'll be able to, to get those, uh, those two uh, white papers. Well, let, let's just kind of make, light of what you just said the intent is to go over things that we can share with you and randy can share with you on how to use chat gpt how to use some of the prompting that he's he he's sharing with you he i he asked if he could do this and i said yeah i might as well if people don't have you know this that you can go ahead and and allow people to get it because paul's not selling this in the open market right now this new versions of everything that he's doing is only available through current uh you know owners of the software and so if you see something here that you know makes it your life easier fine but don't don't misunderstand the purpose of this is not to sell anything the purpose is to bring good data have it for you to understand and if this is a system that might work for you then that's perfect but you know 
don't want you to get misconstrued. This isn't, you know, something that we're doing to try to sell something. But if it works, it works and you can buy it later. Okay. Yep. So the type of things that you would have for tasks and workflows, these are types of things that for the most part, like titles and headlines, chat GPT can do or GPT-4 can do. But if you ask it to write, titles and headlines like Gene Schwartz, one of the, the granddaddies of copywriters, you're going to get a completely different set of titles and headlines than you would if you just asked ChatGPT to. But you could do keyword research, you could do models and frameworks, you can do guidelines and SOPs, quality and efficiency of obviously using a software, you can do GMB descriptions, SEO metadata, you know, most any of the softwares would do that. With this particular software, uh, some of the things that it has that becomes very handy is there's a save function. So you can save what work you're doing. With chat, chat GPT, you have to copy everything and put it into a document to save it. Okay, you can clone it. So you take what you've done already, and you can clone it and do some other things with it. You can spin the content. You don't have to go to another spinner in order to spin the content. Uh, this will do it for you. Uh, you obviously can do act as, you can do research priming uh, so that you have continuity and everything that you're uh, writing about and doing as it pertains to your website and everything else. So you can research that. Uh, you could write as if, as we, which we've been talking about, some of the famous copywriters. You can do article writing, video scripts. I am going to show you an example of a video script. You can do blogs. Now, if I'm just writing a blog that I want somebody to use for conversion, I would use this software. If I'm writing a blog post for somebody that I'm trying to beat and be at the top and compete with them based on SEO, then I would use ZimWriter for it, okay? And you can get ZimWriter, I think it's under $10 a month to pay for you know, ZimWriter, and it just does an incredible job of you know, writing uh, in context of SEO. But again, that's not emotional writing, that is writing that's done in a logical type of format. Uh, but it, it, it is great, uh, to do that press release you know what, Randy, with all that, with all that being said, one of the biggest things that is on everybody's mind, I don't know whether or not it's, you know, really that much to consider, but how is it as far as plagiarism, like chat GPT three has been throwing out a lot of, you know, stuff that can't pass Grammarly and plagiarism checkers and stuff like that versus human versus AI. You know, so I mean, there there is a discussion and a legitimate discussion about it. You know, Google just basically came out and say, if it's good content, if it makes sense and it's helpful for the page and it's helpful for the people, you know, it's okay, right? Well, let, let me address that two so, ways. I, so I address I, that, would you? Thank you. I've taken this, what this is written, and I've gotten a hundred percent pass on everything I've ever submitted. However, the interesting thing is. I took content that was absolutely, I, I took a post, I, I took an article from the Huffington Post, which I knew was handwritten. It was not AI written, okay? And I run it, I ran it through three of the uh, human writing tests, okay? And it failed all three of them. So that tells you how good they are at being able to detect human writing versus AI writing. And Google's already come out, as you said, and has indicated that, you know, it's not even an issue. All they want is that you're providing good, valuable information, and that, this will do it. Um, emails. I've not seen anything come close to writing emails. Now I write a lot. I have to write a lot of emails. I'm on a project right now where I'm doing all my website copy, my press releases, my emails. 
it's all being done by this. And, and it's insane. We, ask Patrick, we did a press release. I, the very first one I did took me probably less than five minutes. It was probably the best press release I have ever seen, period. It was insane. Uh, I got to say it was pretty, pretty astoundingly, unbelievably coherent and it's nothing i could have ever dreamed of writing no no you really can't uh website copy you know my website copy has just been phenomenal uh i i i've done some and we'll be getting in that and uh, another thing i've done some videos from this uh you can do ads you can do reports uh you know if you want to get a report out to somebody books and ebooks this is the only software that's on the market right now that we know of that we know of uh thank you that we know of that by a couple of prompts it will write you a complete book and that 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 function is being released tomorrow so they continue to add to the program and and I'm pretty excited about that because when you write a book, a couple things happen is if you're writing a book on a topic, it generally has all sorts of, it's laid out the chapters almost the way you want to lay out a website in some ways or a web page. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very powerful way to go about, you know, getting content that's this powerful content that's written more like as a human would do it, it, it to you know, answer the questions, especially if you're deep diving into a particular topic. So two questions, Randy. Two sure. questions. Um, do you know whether or not that they do or are going to be coming out with an API? No, they won't be coming out with an API. Okay. Second question is, it's not a question, but it's a marketing uh, statement, which is, if we listen to everybody around us over the years, what do they tell us that we need to do? We need to have so our own personal social proof, our agency social proof. We need to be on the press releases and you know everybody can see our press release. You need to go write a book. You need to go do this, right, 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 right. For authority. For, for all of your authority, right? For who you yep. are. So now, I mean, when you showed me this the other day and I'm thinking, man, I gotta be writing me a book a month, right? Publish it on Amazon. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if nobody ever buys the bloody thing. Okay, no. we can get people to buy them. We'll just sell them for a dollar. We'll get a hundred people to buy them, and you'll move up the charts. But the point is, if you what you're saying, and what all of the things that we've learned about, you know, becoming an authority in our space, we need to have these other things, right? That that. Yes kind of tell us that we're an authority or tell that the audience that we're an authority and books published books is one of the best things that you can have especially if they're published on three things right amazon amazon kindle and amazon audio so you make a book a kindle and an audio book all out of out of whatever software you're going to be using but all out of the same thing and now you've got three things make one a month that's 36 pieces of, of you know data that's out there on your specialty that you're an author of that brings authority to you in your space that people can see. Does that make sense to everybody? Give me give me a yes if that makes sense or what if that makes sense or you know I'm on my drug pattern again. I mean it it just it just is that one thing that we we all can never do. And I'm going to show you something. This is an $11 book. Right? $11 book. You probably can't see it because I'm faded out, but if you could, it's an $11 book by Matt Basic. Anybody know who Matt Basic is? Give me a give me one. Give me one, right? Give me one if you know Matt Basic. He's the best email copywriter in the entire world. So in order to get into any of his classes, and this is what we're going to start to do, right? It's $7 for his book. 7 bucks. And it's all his 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 email writing tips, Randy, right? Yep. So in order in order to get on his 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 webinars, guess what you have to do? Anybody? 
Guess what you have to do to get on one of his webinars? Buy his book. Brian, Randy, Craig, you got to buy his damn book and you got to send him the receipt to get on his webinar. How brilliant is this? I mean, seriously, it's brilliant. He's not selling books, but he's getting so high up in the ranking because it costs seven bucks to buy his book to get on one of his webinars. Better than an NFT. I agree, Scott, right? But the whole point of it that you're bringing to us now, which I think is awesome, I get really excited about this because I can't write my name without spelling it wrong, right? Is the opportunity to make, I'll tell you what, the font, if you could see the font size on this, you could probably see, see how big that, well, you probably can't. <laughs> big. <laughs> see, how, see how big that font size is? You know, there's probably 100 words of page. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter. He created the book, the audio book, and it's on Amazon, and you can, and it's on Kindle, and it's an authority, right? Absolutely. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant marketing strategy for you, for your customers that make a, you know, create a book. Randy, we've done this before. Create a book, and when you get a customer, send them your damn book. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Send it to them. Sign the bloody thing and send them your itty bitty little book about what it is that you're doing for them. You have no idea how important that could be to that individual because you've sent them something that is in print that's an authoritate you're authoritative on, and now they have it, and it's proof that you know what you're talking about. It doesn't prove squat. We all know that, but to them, it does. That's what's important. I'll give you an example. Uh, wait a minute. Does everybody agree with me, or am I just ranting in, in, to rant? Right? Brian says, I could write that book in two minutes. Okay, there you go. Biz business. Who said business card? Somebody just said it's the best business card that you could send out. Right? That's a that's a that's awesome. I I, I tell you what, I Damon could sit here and write books for you know RSS and all the other stuff that he does and put them out there. Damon's on here, Damon Nelson. He's awesome, dude. You know, he's 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 brilliant right for all the stuff that damon does and he could write these books and they could be put out there for all the stuff he does with rss masher and all the other stuff that he does yeah go on that's bad that's the best damn advertisement you could get put out there right sorry i didn't mean to say that damon but i mean you're awesome dude i love you you know as an example my my son has written a couple books and i'll tell you one thing that happens is when he signs the book for a patient and that patient takes that book home, you know, you get a business card and sooner or later it gets tossed away. But I'll guarantee you that that book's on his shelf. And if anybody asks that, that patient, do you know of a dentist? He's going to walk over, grab that book and say, this is my dentist. It goes from, it takes you from being the dentist to my dentist because yep. people want to be associated with somebody who has you know, that authority, the, you know, the personality, uh, you know, level that you, that, that happens with that uh, type of thing. So it, it's just very powerful. And I also have a, I, I, I did a ghost cop, uh, ghost writing of a book uh, for an attorney. And uh, she sends out 3000 books. She's a personal injury attorney and she sends out 3000 books a year to people in the community that gets her business uh crazy so one of the things that that for for all of us that are in, in agencies you know we're working with customers we're working with clients i mean and i'll tone it down a little bit but i i, I i'm very excited about this because of the ability through whatever software you're using paul happens to have a really good one for doing this but take the time to actually do this and part of your prospecting, part of your continuing relationships with your customer is, you know, write something about yourself, make it authoritative on what it is that you do. And it doesn't have to be physical. I mean, it can be up on Amazon, it can be wherever, but send them a digital copy of it, you know, just as a thank you for working with you and doing business with you and lay out how you do things and whatever. I mean, that's just how, how what I'm gonna do. 
you know, just to keep communication going with my customers and my clients on something that's totally not related to the work that we're doing, but it is totally related to the work that we're doing because we're giving them ideas and, and sufficient proof that we know what we're doing by, by being willing and vulnerable to send them something. Does that make sense? I mean, I, I just think that it's it, it's something that we we all want to do or could want to do, but we never have time and we don't have the intelligence to sit down and write a book. That takes a special skill, Randy. Yep. It really does. And when you can take these outlines and like what you see right there, title, headlines, keyword, model, framework, guidelines, SOPs, quality, I mean, yeah, I just I just think it's amazing and then I'll shut up. I'm sorry take up too much of your time. Uh, that's exciting. I'll tell you, I, I, I'm excited about it. Real, you know, and like I said, it's going to be released tomorrow. Uh, one of the things, though, that I also mentioned was we want to repurpose content. Uh, this gal is Felicia Pagets, and she makes seven figures uh, a year teaching people how to just repurpose the content. So you can take that book that we've been talking about, and guess what? You can take each one of those chapters, becomes a white paper. It, it becomes a blog post. It becomes whatever you want. In our case, because you can produce this so fast, what I, what I, you know, what this software does, what uh, uh, Human Talk does, is it will take whatever you write and it will convert it into a audio file and it does it you'll see just instantaneous i mean it's amazing how fast it does it and but it gives you the ability to you know choose a voiceover have the type of voice whether it's excited hopeful friendly sad whispering terrified shouting angry and and you can even, you know, if you, one of the things that Paul Pana has talked about is, you know, take a, if you had a story that you were going to write and it had different people in that story, is you can have the girl have, speaking the girl's part, the boy speaking the boy's part, and, you know, different, you know, tones as you're going through. Uh, this software is just amazing what it allows you to do, but it allows you to repurpose it. And what I've done is I've, created the audio and then I've created from that audio I've created the video okay so I, I I ran a video script created the audio from that then created the video from it and uh it's a very simple process now you know what I like about that Randy there's a lot of softwares out there on you know you know dirtbag warrior forum and JV zoo and everything else that you know oh Take this, put it into here, and it'll automatically create, you know, your stuff. Well, when you do that, you really, what you're saying is you don't have much control. It may be okay, but you're not controlling the outcome. Yep. And here, you know, it's, you're doing the same thing. You're adding the data, you're adding the, the avatars and all of that, but you're actually controlling and you're, you're the producer of the content. And you know exactly what it's going to do, exactly how it's going to work, as opposed to, oh, you know, the, one of the latest softwares I just saw is put in a keyword and, you know, you've got 100 videos. I'm not sure I want to put my name on that. How about you guys? Yeah, it sounds cool, right? But if you don't have any control over what it is that you're, you know, what you're putting out to the world, that kind of scares me a little bit. I don't know. What do you guys think? Are you scared about that or you just don't care? You just want to put it out there. Give me one of, you know, you want good quality stuff or two, you just want stuff, right? Um, yeah, one, we one, Roger, right. We want good quality stuff. So why, why take and do it the easy way, Randy, when it only takes a little bit of effort and a little bit of, you know, of your own personality to put something together that actually represents what it is that you want to say and how you want to say it, right? Yeah, you know, with all the pieces of content that we're putting out there, the whole idea behind what uh, uh, 
uh, Felicia talks about is you're taking it from high quality content, like you did a webinar, you're taking it from high quality content that you've already created, okay? She's not talking about putting junk out there because if you do that, she's finding out that it increases conversion, uh, it increases leads coming into your business two to three times the, of anything else that you're doing. And, you know, so, you know, we're looking to create high quality content out there. I mean, you can now take an audio file and you can put it on the, the uh, for a podcast. You can use it for, you know, all sorts of areas where you're continuing to get all these links and touch points to show authority out there in the marketplace. So, you know, it, we'll, we'll go over that in the, in the demo. So, I mean, part of this is just new ways for us to market ourselves. Is that right, everybody? I mean, we all did the best that we could. We did our ads and we did, you know, all the things to generate customers and clients and whatnot. But I mean, just like my, how many of you guys in here know Gene Kalinda? I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to just do a, a crazy advertisement for Gene. Anybody in here know Gene Kalinda? Right? Yeah. Brian knows Gene Kalinda. Okay. A few people do. Gene, she's my, she's actually, I can't tell you what age she is in reference to me, but we're close, right? And I'm probably younger than her. But she's got a brilliant way of doing things in social media, right? She takes, and it's going to get to a different level, Randy, now, but she creates images about your niche for your plumber, for your you know, HVAC guy for your dentist, for your doctor, what your pest control guy. And then she brands them with their logo and mixes them up with, you know, this day in history, stuff like that. And they're automatically posted to six different social media posts for us. Okay. And the beautiful thing about that is we don't have time to do that. She's created an environment to do that. And this, she's 71. Thank you, Rod. That's not me. That I did not post that. Rod posted that. Wasn't me. You said it. Okay. <laughs> but the whole the whole point is is that you know it's another extension of us in a way for customers and, and clients. And you know we're just talking to one of the pizza people, national, and they love the idea of constant posting, constant posting of good quality. Now when we have what we have here right? We can take that to, you can take that to a different level if you want and do the same thing. Social posting every day, social posting, social posting out there. And it's good stuff because you had control over it. That's what I'm trying to say, right? Mm -hmm. Control over the stuff that we put out there. Don't just spam it like we you know, used to do, right? So anyway, yeah. Patrick Tuttle says, super nice lady. Everyone loves Jean. <laughs> all right rod's my super persona here so anyway i the point was i'm not plugging her but i'm just telling you guys that there are services that make some of the stuff that we're doing less arborous to ourselves and it gets out there and it's very inexpensive to do right so anyway uh, well I, you know i and i want to go back to the slide here about the things because with uh this software there's 800 plus human voices. Wow. Okay. Uh, and obviously not that many people, but the voices being excited, hopeful, friendly, you know, so you have these voices out there. And one thing to give you a little idea of what just doing something like this can do. Uh, there's a guy that I used to, uh, was it not affiliate for, but I, I had purchased this program, purchased too many programs. Uh, and his name was Steve Cunningham. And he had a site called read it for me. And to become use his program cost $1,030. And what he did is he simply summarized the book. Okay. And then he did a voiceover because people didn't want to just read even the summaries. They wanted to hear the summaries. 
They tried to do it in videos and people didn't want to watch the videos. All they wanted to do is listen to the, the voice. They're driving to and from work or wherever and they wanted to absorb what that book had to say, but they don't have time and they'd listen to it. Okay. Um, so, and one other thing for people who are not in the US and we'll go over this, this has a trans uh, translation engine so that you can have the voice be in any voice that you are in any country in any you know whether it's germans you know french spanish english you know from england and mm -hmm. all of it, you know it 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 has all those uh, uh variations and uh the same thing with text writer is it has a translation to that as well so that you could write it in english and you hit a button, you know, translate it instantly to what other language you want it uh, to be at, written in. And Randy, for me, when you showed this to me the other day, I mean, all right, I'm going to ask a self, you know, slashing, throw mud in my face question. How many of everybody in here knows how awesome I write? <laughs> right? Everybody, give me a one if I write awesome or a 10 if you just sometimes can't read what I say, okay? <laughs> I mean, yeah, five, 500 from Josh. Okay, cool, Josh. Remember that that free counseling session that you and I were going to have? Forget it. Ain't happening, okay? Just can't stop laughing. So the point is, is that with what why I'm so excited here, and I'm sure that there are other, other of these that do this, okay, is that this has a text to talk why you, your screen is up in the there you go there you go yeah you're trying to so you can actually talk in your prompt to this right and to me that's pretty cool i mean how, how many of you guys like the idea that you could just talk your prompt in and phrase what you want to phrase and if you don't like it you can kind of go back and fix it as opposed to typing and then typing it wrong or having to go back and fix your typing and stuff like that, right? So this piece, when Randy showed this to me the other day, I said, we got to show people about, you know, this. I don't know if anybody else has this out there. You know, quite frankly, I don't care. Text writers, Randy's a demo, right? So is human talk, wait a minute. I, I lost what Damon just asked me, hold on. Is human talk the same as text writer that Randy is demoing? They're all part of the same thing. Human talk and text writer are all combined into one package, one software. Okay. So they integrate with one another. Uh, you cannot get text writer by itself. It, it just is part of uh, Paul's uh, program. So let, let me give you an example. I'll go through and give you a demo of this, just how you know incredible this is. Right. Yeah. Wait a minute. Before you do that, someone asked, you said this before, what's coming out tomorrow? You made a reference to something that's coming out tomorrow. Uh, there will be a new tab up here where like it has my projects, human talk, that will be for writing a book. Okay. That's coming out tomorrow. So uh, let, let's, uh, let me give you an example of just how well this thing works. And I, I, Happen, I'm going to read from something that I already said, just so it doesn't sound stupid as I'm trying to, uh, you know, think of it. But uh, then we'll have it go to a prompt uh, and such. So you you click on the voice assistant to start, then say, write a follow up email to people who have just signed up for a seminar on mono dental implants for August 11th and August 12th. Write it as a famous copywriter, Joe Sugarman, would write the email and include emotional text and highlight key points in the email. Address the confusion and anxiety the dentist might have over learning how to place dental implants based on other systems he has seen and let him know that the seminar is structured to give him all the information as well as hands-on training so that he will feel as if it was the best seminar he had ever attended and walk away ready to start placing mono implants. Now, let me ask you if you could do that in, uh, so it took everything I said and it wrote it up 
it took that text and wrote it up here. Okay. So well, uh, let's ask everybody to answer the question. I mean, seriously, that's what I was talking about. Can everybody here, and like I said, there's probably other ones that out there may do this, and I've looked at a lot of them, but we boiled it down to the things that we want to use and therefore want to share that. But literally, when you think about what Randy just did and how he summarized the exact thought process that he wants, right? and speaks it out i don't know for you but for me when i speak things out i understand them better than when i write them out that may be just me anybody else like me right or do you have to write them out to understand them better than when you speak them yeah terry melt he yes right so that's why i wanted brandy to kind of really come in here and show you you know how this is working and then the really, I'm going to show you something else that what for me is a really cool part that's going to happen after this, right? So, sorry, I don't, I don't mean to keep interrupting. Oh, that's you. okay. This is so freaking cool, right? <laughs> so, Randy, can you zoom in the screen and make the words bigger? Uh, probably not. I don't know. I can, I wonder if I can take my, let me do this. Try it and see. There, how's that? Go again, again. Yeah, that's good. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Thanks uh, you're going to miss something, though, if I do that. I got to no. go out just a little bit. The reason I say that is you got to see what's going on here. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. So, what you're going to do next, you can, if that was good enough for a prompt, you could just hit the next button and away you go. But, you know, if I, I'm trying to get it to write a certain way and take what I just said and turn it into a prop that is actually going to produce for me what I just said I wanted it to produce. And so I then hit an advanced prompt and I hit submit. And it's going to take a, a, a couple minutes to go through and churn and you know come up with the prompt. But there we go. So the prompt that it came up with was compose a persuasive follow-up email that incorporates emotional language and emphasizes the unique benefits of your upcoming monodental implant seminar on August 11th and 12th. Use the style of renowned copywriter Joe Sugarman to address any confusion and anxiety the attending dentist may have about placing dental implants based on other systems they have encountered. Highlight the seminar's structured approach to providing comprehensive information and hands-on training so the attendees, attendees feel confident and ready to implement their new knowledge. Be sure to include specific examples of how attending the seminar will improve the quality of the practice and patient care. So I'm going to take that prompt and I'm going to hit next. And it's now going to go out and generate an email for me because that's what I asked it to do is to generate an email. And I want, I want everybody to realize this is not an example. This is a real live really live example of what we are actually doing for this event in, a, in in August for dentists. So we're literally using this and I want you know to, sh to share with everybody, this is what we're doing re in real life to send emails, to promote this business. And we're using this specifically for this event in August for dentists, right? So this is not just hyperbole. It's not just something we're thinking to share with you. This is live. This is what we are actually doing. Is that cool? Is that, does that make sense to anybody? Does it make any difference if it's live or Memorex? But this is really live. This is exactly what we're doing. So I can now copy that to a clipboard and do whatever I want, or I can download it as a text, but let's just read this. Subject, don't miss out on a life-changing opportunity. Register for our model dental implant seminar. Dear doctor, I hope this email finds you well. I want to, wanted to follow up with you regarding our upcoming model dental implant seminar on August 11th and 12th. The seminar will promise promises to provide you with life-changing opportunity to enhance your dental practice and take your patient care to new heights. I know you may have some confusion and anxiety about placing dental implants based on other systems you may have encountered, but our seminar is designed to address those concerns head on and provide you with a comprehensive understanding of the latest and most effective approach to monodental implant placement. At the seminar, you will not only gain an in, 
depth understanding of the technology behind the mono dental implant system, but you also get hands-on training and how to place them effectively. Our structured approach covers everything from case selection to post-operative care to ensure that you leave the seminar feeling confident and ready to implement your new knowledge. Attending our seminar will give you a rare opportunity to collaborate with like-minded dentists and dental professionals, share your experiences and learn from other physicians and clinicians with decades of experience. As a renowned copywriter, Joe Sugarman once said, the key to making the sale is to make an emotional connection. Well, that I would take out of the thing. Uh, by attending the seminar, you will gain several benefits, including, you know, so, you know, oh, so wow. if, it, if it takes something that you don't like, you're going to be able to just remove it, you know, when you send it out or, you know, copy it over. That's, by simple, the, that's just simple editing, right? Yep, that's just simple editing. So perfect, but my gosh, it's 98%. Yeah. So Patrick by, is going to teach dentists the new way to install implants now. We gave away the store, Randy. Yeah. So my secret, my secret is out. Yeah. So it then goes down through the different points. Uh, don't miss out on this life-changing seminar, ta da 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 And then what I can do now is I can take it to the next step. And the next step says, if I want to, let's say it was a long uh, article I wrote, I could ask it to summarize it. And it would take that long article and summarize it so that I can then put it, you take and transfer it over to uh, human talk and do a voiceover. So I'm not necessarily doing the voiceover of the entire thing. thing. I can now skip it if I don't want to do that. And here I have the opportunity to translate it. And you just decide what do you want to translate it to? Chinese, Dutch, Finnish, French, German, Greek, Hebrew, Hindu, Hungarian, Japanese, Korean, yeah, Portuguese, all of, them. all of them. Okay. And you have the ability to it would just rewrite that, doing that, which I'm not going to do because I actually want to use this uh, uh, thing, so I'm not going to save it, and it saves it. And now, if I go back here when I'm ready to, I can go in and view this article. I can this is, edit this, this is, article. This or, is what you showed me the other day that was was just to me very, very, very cool and very important for me. Because normally I do these things, we get off, and then I try to go back and find them, and I can't find them. And I'm just for me, but here it's all nice, neatly compacted for me, right? Yep, it's got exactly what the what was said in order to do that and then it has what the what was said so you can then you know copy it and edit it and sure. do whatever you want to with it so it's saved there for you uh let, let me go and do another one for you just uh, as an example so you go back and get your content prompt uh i want you to see how fast the press release comes out it's insane Okay, so write a compelling press release for Mono Implant Centers announcing the opening of Mono Implant Academy, which will provide the latest information for dentists on how to enter the field of dental implants using the recently FDA approved mono implants in the United States. These implants developed in Switzerland have been successfully, have been used successfully for two decades outside the United States. They bring a more affordable option to patients here in the U.S. looking for dental implants. So we're going to write a, so it took what I just said, and I messed up where I was talking, uh, but seemed to clean it up. So we'll hit the advanced prompt. So, hey, Scott, you guys. Give me a one if you guys think this is a depends moment. You And you guys that are on here that know us, you know what I mean by that, right? So how many of you guys think this is a depends moment, right? A one, a one plus one, right? Josh, one. So, you know, this is one, 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 one. Yeah, th this, like, let me read this to you. Okay, because okay, then you right. go to the next level, which is insane. Uh, compose a concise and persuasive press release announcing the opening of Mono Implant Academy, 
I like the extensive experience and success of Swiss advanced mono implants, which are now FDA approved in the United States. Explain how the Academy will equip dentists with the necessary knowledge and skills uh, to efficiently, efficiently and safely use the implants in their practice while providing affordable treatment options for the patients, incorporate credible quotes from industry leaders and experts and emphasize the unique value and proposition of mono implants brings to the dental community. That's pretty good. I would normally just hit next, but I may say, nah, it's close, but not enough. So let's resubmit it and come up with a different one. Well, you know what? You could resubmit them and just do different press releases each time. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you can, you know, you don't, you can, you're not returning the same one. You're creating a new one with, with a different version to it. You know, so you could just keep hitting boom, 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 and writing these things. And if you have like, you know, lifetime press release, you know, services to, you know, certain programs out there, even free press releases, you know, whatever you've got. Yeah. That's why this is so cool. So th at this one, I, I like this better. As a representative of Mono Implant Centers, please craft a press release announcing the opening of Mono Implant Academy, which aims to provide dentists in the United States with the latest information on using recently FDA approved mono implants for dental implants. Describe the benefits of these implants, their affordability and the advances in technology made possible through their use. Provide relevant background information about the success of mono implants outside the United States over the past two decades, backed up by concrete statistics and studies, include quotes from industry experts, testimonials from patients, wow. and information on ex educational opportunities available through the academy. Finally, write in a tone that is both confident and supportive, projecting the message with uh, Mono Implant Academy. Dentists can increase their uh, skill sets and gain competitive knowledge in the field of dental implants. Wow. Next. Wow. Isn't that cool, guys? I mean, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm a kid in the candy shop when it comes. And I, look, we got a Skype room that's 300 people in there. We talk about chat GTP all the time and different prompts and different well, webinars or, or, or videos we watch and all kinds of stuff. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in there, which anybody's free to go in there and just check it out. But, you know, nothing that, I, that I've seen has all of these elements and everything in such a professional way that makes sense, that is easy. And, I, you know, I admit it, I'm, 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 not a, I'm not a real techie guy. And when this is this easy, dude, I can sit here and do this all day long and put content out there and put it out on different platforms and different forums, making videos and TikToks and all this other stuff. So, you know, that's that's kind of like why I wanted to present this to everybody today to get over some of these barriers and get, get over some of the stuff that we're seeing on Warrior Forum. My God, my, my email is like 17 different, you know, chat GPT programs, Randy. Yeah, and I know. And I look at all of them. I mean, I'm, I, I do, I look at every single one of them and I go through the sales page and blah, blah, blah. Right. And, you know, I don't even own this yet. And I'm so excited about it. Yeah, this is, this is crazy. You know, and I, oh, oh one question. Is this 3.5 or four? Sorry. Uh, it, it is, uh, it is neither. <laughs> I knew that. Okay. Um, there, there is a, another system that's not generally been shared out there that does have an API key to it. That uh, is what Jasper had used, and I believe that's what th this is being used for as well. And that doesn't mean that he won't be integrating API, you know, GPT four in it, but I doubt it. But uh, the other system is actually more advanced than uh, Chat GPT. Uh, is may not be quite as advanced as uh, Jet GPT four. I don't know that, but it definitely is more than uh, Jet GPT. Um, but this, I, again, just an insane uh, thing. I'm not going to take your time. No, to can you listen? Listen, listen. Can you copy the what the output was right there? Copy to a clipboard. Yeah. Paste that. Paste that in the chat room. Okay. Okay. And now re and and. See those three dots on the right-hand side when you guys are in the chat okay. next to the smiley face, those three dots? Let Randy post that in there and then you can click those three dots and you can save the chat 
to your uh, to your hard drive. All right, I'm, but I'm sure everybody already knew that anyway. But uh, if you didn't, let's go here. So which, which? No, 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 no. Type it in our chat here in the in the webinar. Oh. So go into the chat. Okay. And then you know paste it to everyone. And okay. then when you do that, everybody. Take a lot of room. Oh, you can't see the three dots. That's just me. Uh, I'm just seeing if I can paste it. Oh, okay. Well, maybe maybe that's not turned on for you guys. All right. I'm sorry. Um, uh, it's not letting me paste that much information. Okay. So. Well, well, just hit us up later, and we'll send you the copy. It's too. I'll tell you what. I, I'll put I'll put it in uh, the room. Uh, okay. The, the Skype room here, real quickly. Okay. Uh, everybody's in backlink factory, right? No, not necessarily, but no. Oh. Well, how about I give it to uh, to Rod and he can send it out. How you like That's that, right. Rod? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, cool. Anyway, you caught me on mute, so I guess I can't complain because. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can't argue. Oh, you know what? We're going to look like. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So, Rod, you can send that out for it to everybody or whatever. Yeah. Just okay. drop it to me in Skype and I'll drop it in. I the just room. did. Okay. Okay. So, so, is everybody finding this helpful? I mean, even if you don't have this, you still finding what, what Randy's teaching and things that he's sharing with you helpful for what? your walk is and how you're going through this process of understanding chat gtp and how to use it so you know give me one if you think this is really helpful whether you you know i don't care whether you buy it that's not, the purpose of this is not to help you buy this we want you to understand how to use this whole system right and be more more precise in how you're you know look you can i got another idea you know, there's leads gorilla out there. There's other kind of programs where we're using to get leads. And then when we get the feedback, what I'm going to start doing, and this is something that you guys could do as well, right? But when you find something wrong and you're trying to get a new customer and you put them through one of their, you know, check their website and find out whatever's wrong with it. Instead of just sending them an email that says your H2 tags or your speed is, you know, screwed up right? What I'm going to do now is take the same health reports, find all the stuff that's wrong with them, and then take the problem that they have, come into here, identify what the problem is, and ask it, what is the best way to solve that problem? Instead of me thinking about the things that you and I might say to a customer, right? Because it's coming from our brain. And I'm going to go in here and put it in here and have this write it and write the answers out, send them the problem of their website in an email that says, these are the things that you need to fix. And Josh, you know, he's he's brilliant in doing websites. He could probably relate to what I'm talking about when you see, you know, the things that are wrong. Like, you know, we got Leads Gorilla tells everything that's wrong with your with your site. And it 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 sends an email. The email does not identify how to fix the problem. It just says, here's your problem. If you want us to help you fix it, you know, click here. Well, I think if we tell them how to fix it and they see how complicated it is to fix, they're going to want to rush to hit the button to have us do it for them. The more you tell people how to fix things, the more they're going to want you to fix them. Is that true? Is, is that a one true or 10 false, right? Teach somebody how to build a car, right? And how many people are going to build the car? They're going to come to you to buy the car. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. We got people that buy Backlink Factory all day long. And guess what else they buy? The done-for-you backlinks that we create for them, and they already own the product. Okay? So I know that this concept works. So the more that we do that, and the more we have the tools to help us do this and, and find you know, that GPV that's number seven in an industry that's not yours, that you're working with a client, and you take all this stuff and you put it, so this is such a great lead finder to me and the way that I think, right? Teach them long division, sell them a calculator. Damon's, that's brilliant, right? Yep. Same idea, same concept. I think this is, this is a lead generation program 
more so than it is just writing content. You know, I, I agree with you because one of the principles I've seen repeated time and time by people is, you know, when you leave something out, there's a bit of mistrust. When you tell them how to fix it, that mistrust goes away and you're building trust with them, which is the first obstacle you have to go get by when you're going after going to talk to a lead. Right. I'll, do, I'll do one last thing here uh, because I want to show you how it comes out. That is very cool. Um, okay. Write a 60 second video script why they would want to learn to place mono implants so they can expand their services and get out from under the thumb of PPOs by adding a high value service with a profit margin, with a high profit margin. Ah. Ah. Didn't Read do it. it again. Okay. Write a 60 second video script why they would want to learn to place mono implants so they can expand their services and get out from under the thumb of PPOs by adding a high value service with a high profit margin. Okay, go to advanced mode. So again, I mean, I think you guys can see that. I'll, for a second here anyways, I'll blow it up a little bit. So there you go. Yeah, it's hard to read actually. So. Yeah. If you can read that, I'll do it even one more time if I can. Okay. Okay. Yep, perfect. Leave that set for a second for everybody to read if you want. Okay. Yeah, you know, right. a lot different than what I, stated up here yeah yeah you sounded like a hick <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> that so, that's a professional statement from what you said and interpreted your meaning as well right yep. okay so now we're now we're going to generate the video script and this is so cool for a video script stop you're giving away your passion uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to be impartial yeah I, I tell you i you know i okay I, I i'm creating i have to create four websites which i'm working on right now for the project and this is writing everything for me and it just takes a little bit of editing it's crazy okay opening shot of a dental clinic with a dentist and his team in action narrator as a dentist are you looking to add high value profitable service to your practice that will make you stand out in the crowded dental market cut up close to up to the dentist narrator well consider learning how to place mono implants cut to a patient getting her dental implant placed narrator wow. mono implants are cost effective require less time and fewer visits than traditional implants and uh, implants and offer a high profit margin cut to the patient smiling happy with their new Implant narrator by mastering this procedure, you'll be setting the practice apart from the competition. New uh, cut to a satisfied customer in the waiting room talking with the dentist. Narrator patients are incredibly happy with the results of their model implants, and case studies have shown that they are excellent solution for replacing mini, missing teeth. And ta da, again, just going on right to the end. But you, you see, it does the whole thing for you which is insane. It's giving you an idea of what picture or whatever you want to do, uh, you know, is, is right there. So does it actually find the pictures for you too, or do you have to find no, those? No, it won't find the pictures for you, but it gives you an idea of what you want to be looking for. for it's easy. There's Pixabay. There's a zillion places to go get the pictures that you need that it tells you exactly what you need to yeah. put into the, the video, right? Yeah, and, and if if anybody has or gets uh, the program that's a kind of a sister program to this, which is um, Human Pale, Human Pale actually has connected to it a whole bunch of uh, I don't want to say they're they're copy free uh, pictures that you can add into your into your thing if you're using uh, that particular piece of software. So anyways, uh, 
So, you know, I go to next. Uh, this time I'm going to summarize the text. Okay. And because it was so short, it pretty well gives you the same thing. Copy that to a clipboard. And now what we want to do is we want to go over to human talk. Okay. And I got to move something here. Get this out so you can see what's going on. Okay, so I want to create an audio. And in this case, what I'm going to just give you an idea of, um, and you know, you'll be able to, uh, you know, go over if you decide you're interested in getting it, you'll be able to go out over to their sales page and it gives you examples of uh, people that you can use. Um, the, the ones that I've used is I've used, uh, I'm going to use English. I select all, there's all these people that you can select from, but I had gone through for myself, the ones that I happen to like, uh, Jenny is one of them for an example. Uh, in fact, I like her for when she has a friendly tone, you know, th these are all the various things that you can wow. use for it but I want uh, friendly in this case, and this is what it sounds like. Hello, you can pick me as your spokesperson for your next project. I can convey your message with a realistic voice filled with emotions that can captivate any audience. Are you able to hear that or not? Yes. Okay. Uh, this Je Jenny is uh, pretty good too. I, I like her. Hello, you can pick me as your spokesperson for your next project. I can convey your message with a realistic voice filled with emotions that can captivate any audience. Uh, Jason here, he's got a great whispering voice. Hello, you can pick me as your spokesperson for your next project. I can convey your message with a realistic voice filled with emotions that can captivate any audience. Yeah, let's see, I want to do, where's Matthew? Just one second, I got to. Find Matt. There's Matthew. Matthew has, has just a great voice. Hello. You can pick me as your spokesperson for your next project. I can convey your message with a realistic voice filled with emotions that can captivate any audience. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Jenny with a friendly voice. And now that I've selected her, let's see, what did I do here? Create audio. Step one, select voice, what I meant. I'm missing something or it's being covered by this, no? Hit next at the top, top right, next. Oh, it's over here, there it is. <laughs> <I thought it's laughs> looking for it. <laughs> That's all right, it's only orange. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I can now put in a voiceover. So it's gonna be English, female, Jenny, friendly. This obviously I pasted in the whole thing they had from the video. I didn't edit out the just the narration parts. I just wanna you know, show you how it works. So I'm gonna paste in that. So uh, I'm gonna do that and keep having this thing in my way. Just one second. I gotta get this out of my way. There we go. Okay, so you have to, I don't want to translate my text at all. I agree to the terms that is not using illegal content. And now I hit next and it's now doing the voiceover for me and it's done. Wow. Okay, that's a minute and 52 seconds. It was a 60 second video, but because it has all the various things in it, uh, you know, you can see, but this is how Jenny sounds. Cut to a patient getting her dental implant place narrator. Mono implants are cost effective, require less time and fewer visits than traditional implants, and offer a high profit margin. Opening shot of a dental clinic with a dentist and his team in action narrator. As a dentist, are you looking to add a high value, profitable service to your practice that will also make you stand out in the crowded dental market? Closing shot of the dental clinic narrator. In conclusion, if you're ready to differentiate your practice, increase profits, and provide high-value dental services with high profit margins, it's time to consider mastering mono implants. 
So, okay. so it created those. And if I was doing something long, I actually can save these. And then, so for an example, I, I can save it, uh, we'll call it uh, test one. So I can either download it or I can save it. If I save it, if I wanted to add this implant or this video or audio, so I say, okay, I want that to be my first audio. And I'd like this one to be my, uh, down here to be my second audio. And then I want this one here to be my third audio. And now if I ended up going in and having it complete it, is that like a conversation you're creating? Yeah, it, it, it would. Com it will combine each of those audios together to create one audio. Okay. So from different people for different shots. Yeah, for different people for different shots. Uh, okay. uh, and obviously, I don't want to do that, but that you just hit the combine right. button and it uh, combines it. And it, it will ask you, do you want a three second or an eight sec a second pause between each of the ones that you you know, uh, bring together. But here's a question. I don't know if you can do this or not, but what would be great is if you could select multiple voices to produce the multiple character scripts you just created. Oh, yes, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. Because you would have a character speak in one part. You'd have a let's say they're talking to somebody that the next character is speaking the second part then you have you know whoever comes in for the next part of the conversation that would so you can have you know 15 different characters in it if you wanted to mm -hmm. you could sounds like you could do it with combine right yeah and then you would hit combine and it would combine all those in one long audio that would then be used to uh go out and you know, use as for an audiobook. And you know, one of the things that I like about this, everybody, everybody that's still here, answer this question. Does what we just shared with you look complicated? Yes or no? Complicated. Like, you got to go to school to learn how to do this, or you have to read through all the instructions and figure out how to do it, right? This is stupid ass simple for me. And, you know, seriously, it's just, it's just learning how to talk and speak what you wanted to say a few times, organizing those thoughts and putting it in there and playing with it and shit within a day. You can master this puppy, right? I'm serious. It doesn't even take a day. Well, I mean, look, some people take a little bit longer, Randy. So give us some slack, all right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, really, it might take Rod two days, but he'll get it, all right? <laughs> but look at, imagine doing Q and A's and doing all the things that you want to do. I mean, like I said, I've I've bought refunded so many daggone programs and tried them and played with them and. You know, if I can't figure the thing out in the first 10 minutes, I just refund. it. I mean, seriously, I don't want to go down that hole because you and, and myself and everybody here, we have way too many things to do to go down all these rabbit holes to try to figure time is money. Terry's exactly right. Right. Do this. And, and the opportunities, you know, for for making these up very quickly for your social media posts. You get a VA, do part of it. I mean, it. No, I, I had heard once and I haven't. Uh, so I asked you because you're the expert in it. Can you take an audio like this and put it in the Q&A of a GMB? Sure. Ask so the what? question, give them an audio, let them listen to the answer. It, uh, I'm going to say sure, because I believe we can, because you can put into, uh, you can put a link in there and that link could be an audio. So why not? I mean, it's a very fast answer. I'd have to look at it, but mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure we could do that, right? I thought I had seen where you could do that. That that was my question. Put it this way. You can put it into the post. The post that you put into your GMBs for all your posting every day, yep. you can put a link in there. 
Yep. Right? You can put a post in your events. You could do a, you could do an audio about the event in your your town about, you know, the makeover for special needs. You could put it in your calendar, right? You yeah. can put that you can put that audio link anywhere. How does it work for a blog post? Do you need to get the outline of the blog post and have it have it write it or will will it just write everything well without headings, etc.? Well, I I when I write a blog post, uh, you know, I want to do a cursory view of it and make sure that you know it still yeah. looks good and you know sounds right. I don't want to just publish it without looking at it. Uh, so far, I probably could take every one and publish it without. The, if you don't get enough information, like in the case of the press release, I didn't give them who the speakers were for the the thing, so I would have to go back on that press release and make a couple edits because they've got quotations that are, you know, maybe from somebody else that I put in the, the name of, you know, the people putting on the, the seminar. But, you know, you, ju you just, uh, you know, just have to okay. think that through and then do it. And, and then you can put that whole blog post in here and it will create one mass file for you. And every blog post that you create, add an audio file now. Very simple. Before, a little more complicated. But now you're doing your blog post, add an audio file for, for those that are seeing impaired. I mean, yeah, that's beautiful, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, and, and Fitz is asking, um, when would you use the Zim writer that you mentioned earlier versus the human talk? What the Zim writer does, what I use the Zim writer for is I have another software called Phrase. And what I do is I'll look at the competition for the top 20 competitors for that keyword or keyword term. Okay. I will then when it when it creates that i can export a, an excel sheet uh or a spreadsheet and from the spreadsheet then i can grab all the h2 h3 tags i can take all the and i did a video for the group on this and i had uh at the same time i take the uh i take I think it's 150 key words into that. And so what Zimwriter does then is it makes sure it uses all of that information in a way that is SEO optimized. Like my blog post here would not necessarily be SEO optimized, but that would make it SEO optimized. And then if I needed to tweak it, I'd throw that back into uh phrase and i take a look at at it if it needed any tweaks uh let's say i was 90 not let's say i was 97 percent right you know where i need to be and i maybe have a cha change one or two words or phrases that brings it up to 100 percent. and now i've got everybody beat except the top person because they're at 100 percent already <laughs> it's insane yeah, sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at what Terry say. Oh, <laughs> the chat. <laughs> he says content is king, and I wrote, "Well, who's the queen?" <laughs> His answer: Not sure yet. <laughs> hey, Abba is Abba AI is the queen. Okay. Okay. Uh, someone, someone's asking if you if you did that video would uh, if they if they connect with Rod will you share that video that you did with the people that are here today? Yeah, I'll, I'll share it uh, with them. The so, uh, everybody get a hold of Rod if you uh, now, now what, one thing you have to understand, and I do it. I don't. I, if any of you know who Frank Kern is, Frank Kern did a. He does a lot of videos and stuff. And Frank Kern did a test. Oh, yes, we will. And he found out that uh, the highest converting video of anything that he's ever done has been one where it's text only. Mm -hmm. And so when I do this, I do my videos as text only with a voiceover in the back. Because it does two things. One, 
the audio is there for somebody to listen to, but two, if they aren't in a place where they can listen to the audio, uh, you know, they can read what's being said and they haven't lost the message. So Fitz is asking, uh, this is kind of, you know, an appropriate question in relationship to what you're talking about is, so you won't use the, um, you won't use this program for website content that needs to be SEO. That's oh, no, 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 no. I didn't say that. Totally not right. That's not what you're saying. No, I'm saying for articles that I'm putting out there or that might be as a blog post or something. I mean, I, I know we're going longer. I mean, I could show you the video if you want to see the video that I made. No, well, if anybody wants to, we can we can play. Oh, send them a link. Okay. But, um, yeah. So I have a question for like Terry, who's in here, not our Terry, but Terry, um, another friend of mine, Terry, who uses uh, you know a different mass distribution system, right? And it, so Terry, you know, hearing what we're doing here and seeing how we would use that, would you be able? to see how this would be beneficial for the system that you use to push data out into the world. Now, I don't want to mention who you're using, but you know, just you see, what, how can you say yes and no? <laughs> you got yes, Terry, you got yes and no. Can you, would this be beneficial for the system that you use to put the data out there? Yes or no? Don't give me both of them. First question, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the, the, the reason that I asked that is because if we have other distribution networks, whatever they happen to be, okay, then this fits kind of like everything. It's that it's that slipper that fits all size feet. Yeah. Right. So okay. I, I mean, the, the whole thing with this is that you have it's prompt engineering. And I've not yeah. found anything yet that does what this does period uh will somebody come along and create another one of these i have no idea they might but yeah, this it, is insane doesn't matter it is what it is today yep right yep so with this program just so you know what it, it includes it's unlimited ai content writer no limits you, you get to use this forever without, it's a one-time price deal. You get to use it forever, unlimited amount of content. You can do the spinner. I didn't show you the spinner, but you know, you've seen what spinners can do. Uh, and this does not give you all the codes for the spinner. This just takes the text and respins it, okay? So you could transform any old text into meaningful, high impact and unique content. It has 800 AI human voice clones. It's got next generation emotional AI voices. And one of the things, one of the things that Patrick and I were talking about with Paul, you know, if it gets better, which the technology will be getting better, he always updates it. He's never not updated the, the product. Right. Uh, you got the AI content summarizer, which I showed you. And you got, whoop, you, let me get and you got the one-click transition uh, translation engine, so you can translate the words, or you can translate the both the voice, or you can translate them both. Very powerful. Uh, again, there aren't any hidden fees, and that again, whether you want to get it or not, it's up to you. Uh, I will tell you that where I'm going to send you, there is my affiliate link, so I would pick up enough money to help pay for my wife's plants, right? <laughs> She's a gardener. So, but, you know, you're sharing and put your, look, you can, you can use the content that you money back. Today anywhere. Okay. You don't have to, you don't have to use this. That's what I keep saying. There's other yeah. things out there. You may have other tools, but if you understand and learn what, what, what Randy's trying to share with us today and how to, you know, structure things, how to use these prompts, you know, use the APRIM uh, prompt generators and, and whatever, right? There's a lot of them out there, but really we wanted everybody to get the opportunity to really drill down and understand 
you know, how to create what you can create with what you already have. And I'm sure we already have certain tools that we use. I just know when he showed this to me, this is just something that I have to have because number one, I don't like to create stuff like this. I don't type very well. So I want all the help that I can get and I could learn it in 10 minutes. That's for me, right? But you all are a lot smarter than me and probably have other things that you can do, right? So the whole idea is making sure you walk away with information that is important to you that you can take and use what you have right now and do a much, much better job at what you're doing. Regardless of whether you do this or whatever that here, you know, what just came to my mind, Randy? What's that? I don't know why. How many of you guys know what uh, Creative Commons are? This just, just popped in my brain. Yeah. I How do. many of you guys know what Creative Commons are? Okay. Only one person knows what Creative Commons are? Oh, okay. Or at least a couple. With, with this or others, once again, whatever you have, what can we do in selling who we are and the service that you provide to your customers and clients with goal with with getting creative common videos creative common books research papers stuff that's out there okay and repurposing them in in here or similar other you know programs that are out there that that can repurpose the content rewriting all of those, making videos out of all of those that are relevant to your business and the service that you offer, okay? And there's a whole, you don't have to worry about copyright because it's all creative commons. I don't know why I just thought about that, but I did. Yeah. And it seems perfectly logical to me that we can go creative commons, research our, what we do, bring that data back and utilize it in you know, whatever shape or form that you might want to utilize it in. Yep. Doing the same damn thing for, you know, affiliate marketing. They give you everything for affiliate marketing. And I know we have a couple of people that are affiliate marketers on here, but they give you everything. Take all the stuff that they give you, create the videos, create the personas, create everything, put it out on your channel, put it on your social media. I mean, we've entered into a, brand, a new world, like it or not, it's not going to go backwards. So how do we embrace it and utilize it and create something? I mean, we'll just kind of end this unless anybody that wants to stay to watch the video, we'll play the video here in a couple of seconds. Everybody else can leave. Okay. But we, we are literally giving you a use case of exactly the process that we are going through to put, why leave? Because <laughs> some people just don't want to stay all through all my bullshit, Terry. But I wanted, I wanted to bring with you a real life situation, not just showing you a product, right? And how we're using this for an event that's going to be pretty big in this summer coming up for these dental implants, for these dentists that are coming to learn and learn something new and everything that we're now I can't say the word everything, but most everything that we're doing and Randy's doing because he's doing most of it is coming from this type of environment and helping us be better at what we do, better at communicating, better at sharing ideas. Okay. So, you know, see you, Damon. Appreciate you coming, buddy. Um, anyway, that's, that's what I wanted to end this with is that we become better when we find things that make us and help us to become better at what we do so that we ultimately give a better solution, better products and a better us to our customers. And I think that's why we're all here. We all want to make money, but we want to, we want to do it in a way that we're proud of how we do it and we want people to know that we are doing it you know for them at least that's what we do right 
the ulterior motive is if we do a really great job, we get paid really good for it, right? Give me a one, you know, if you guys agree with me, right? We're not, we're not charlatans. We're not out here selling hacks. We want to be the best that we can be. And this type of stuff, whether it's this or something else that you have, is going to make you better. And it's not something you should be afraid of. I'm going I'm to let Randy play this video, but I got one last question for you. And, and, and this is kind of an interesting survey, right? So here's my question. Of 100 people on Twitter who are SEO experts and have clients, when they were asked, will you talk to your client about AI, about chat GPT, about how it can affect your business, how many of those professional SEOs said that they would break, breach the subject with their customers, talk to their customers about it, and out of 100 people, Whoever gets closest to this, if you're part of the RSS group or TRS group, I'm going to give you 100 TRS coins, right? Which is worth 150 bucks. What percentage said that they would not talk to their clients because they are afraid of AI? Now, I got to go through all the answers, damn it. <laughs> okay, I got one that's close. Okay. All right, who's closest to 75? Whether you're over or under, I don't care. Closest to 75% of SEOs will not talk to their customers and clients. Oh, now you're going to put in 75 in. <laughs> yeah, okay. Honor system, who is closest to 75? I'll go through and look at it. And we're going to give you, you know, 100 coins. So 75.5 now is the answer. Gosh, you guys are smart, right? So my last question to everybody here is, how many of you are afraid to talk to your customers and your clients about AI and how it could affect their business? Because guess what? At least this is my opinion. If you don't talk to your customers and clients about AI and the effect of what it can happen to their business, who else do you think is going to? And if they do, and they present the idea, what do you think your customer is going to think about you as their professional SEO person, and you did not have the guts to talk to them? Right? I just leave that as an open-ended question for everybody to think about. I'm on, the, I'm on the phone talking to every single one of my customers and clients about AI, what is going to happen. You're going to get phone calls. You're going to get emails. You're going to get spammed with all these things that all these SEO people are going to tell you that they could do because of the AI. And I want to make sure that I tell them all that we can tell them about what it is so that they're prepared to answer those people and tell them to go shove off because their SEO guy has already told them everything about it. So I just want to leave that as a note with everybody. You know, don't be afraid to talk to your customers about what this is and how it could affect their business. Because if you do, when somebody else comes knocking on the door, they're going to respect you first coming to them. At least that's my opinion. 75% of every of these other professional SEOs disagree with me. So just saying. No, I agree. Okay. I definitely uh, I'm going to call it a day. This is the end. Thank you for coming. If you want to stay and listen to the video that uh, Randy created, he'll oh, put this up if he let can. Me, let me do one other thing, Patrick. Yeah, you know, I okay. mean, they can, can get it. Uh, the price is up there, obviously. Uh, right. I had questions and answers, but, uh, you know. Answer the it, objection before it's brought up. Scott, yeah. beautiful, buddy. If you want to uh, get the two uh, papers, you can go to the link up here. Rod, if you put that in, if you want to join the Skype group, you can put that in and you'll be able to download those two papers that uh, I have. And, uh, you know, you can take it from there. If you decide you want to buy it uh, and do it through my link, uh, there'll be some information on that page. You can 
do that as well. But uh, do you want me to play that video or not? Yes or no, everybody that's here, 34 people, you want yes or no, yes? We got, got a bunch of yeses, so let's rock it, play it. Okay, just one second, I gotta, uh, let's see, I gotta jump back on here. And let me, Silas says, play it, buddy. Uh, where do they put these things? Oh, you weren't prepared? Oh, uh, come on. Fitch, you say you missed the link. Link to what? It's in that, it's in that document. It's also in the chat. Rod will put it in the chat. Rod, put it back in the chat for everybody right now, okay? So it's, it's current. Well, I did the thing and now I can't. Okay, darn it. Well, I thought I had it here, but I saved it. Oh. Uh, no, 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 come on. Where did that? I thought I had another bookmarks. No. <laughs> so you're making a, this video was made before this. Yes, it was. Here, just give me a second. I got to jump into something. Uh, da, da, da. You in enough rooms, Randy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh boy. Guys, if you're not in Backlight Factory or POI, the stuff, the videos that he's put in there is, is amazing. Oh, Very nice. If you can't find it, we'll give Rod a link and he can send it out to everyone. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Because I'm not, I thought I had saved it and could hit it easily, and I don't. Okay. So we're good. Thanks everybody. Appreciate it. We'll get uh, hit Rod up if you know where how to reach Rod on Skype, and he'll uh, have a video and he can send it to everybody. So, um, do me a favor for Randy. You know, give him a one to a ten. Was it helpful? Did you learn something? Can you take something away whether you bought or not? You know, give him a add a boy or I don't know. You were a little off today, Randy. I'm not sure that you know. <laughs> that's due to the fact that i don't i think i have the flu <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. all right guys thanks a lot really Thank appreciate you. it now also we're gonna we'll, we'll, we'll have the replay available so listen for anybody that you know that is in this and you want to share you can cut the back off if you don't want to you know put the offer on there but share be be, be more happy to um share the information to anybody that you know because um yeah, you know, we want everybody to do a great job. Okay. Learned a lot, have lots of fun, lots of stuff to sink my teeth into, says Silas. All right, guys. See ya. Bye now. You want to stop the recording? Yep. I'm going to stop the. Re oh, I'm, a, I'm glad Rod re re reminded me to. Uh...